So, morning, morning. Welcome all. Uh, so, I think this, is a, this will be our uh, last session on, on Trevor's initial poem. Uh, maybe more to come, I don't know, but uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to wait and see. So, Trevor, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to kick off just by reading, reading it again and, and uh, giving a couple of inputs because uh, Steve is with us uh, this morning for the first time on this uh, particular thread. Um, others have been around, sort of in and out. So, how's it, Steve? Trevor Carty, hi. Jasper, how's it? Uh, welcome all. So, yeah, we, we're wrapping up our, our thoughts on the poem and uh, just taking it, uh, you know, maybe a bit more personally. You know, where does it, what does it mean to us? Does it mean anything to us? And if it does mean anything to us, uh, can we can we use it in any way to uh, to better our thoughts, better our plans, better our ideas in terms of the way we take our lives and our businesses forward. So Trevor, over to you. Okay, and I hope Steve's got his little one there because this will uh, put a little one to sleep. <laughs> um, so congrats, Steve. Uh, I can't remember when you had this little one, man. Uh, right, so uh, it began like this, Steve. Um, uh, I started with the, uh, with the body first and then I had to come up with the title. So I'll, I'll do it in that order. Rise, rise, rise above the noise. Soar, soar, soar like an eagle. High, high, high beyond the crowds. Glide, glide, glide upon the winds. Look, look, look from afar. Think, think, think for yourself. Focus, focus, focus on the dot. Strike, strike. Strike when it's right. And how this came about, uh, Steve, was um, I, I woke up, uh, told the story 2.30 in the morning, wrote a couple of lines down. It was basically like, like that. I transposed a couple of lines. And then it, it was to do with thinking about what is happening over this COVID crisis. Uh, and so I titled it Crisis, Chaos, connect the dots. Now make sense of that. Uh, that's what everyone's been trying to do here. Uh, and none of them have made any sense of that. Where did it come from? So Steve, we're going to, we're going to leave you to try and interpret that first time and see what your thoughts are. Nothing like dropping you in the cart, Steve, when you've just had a baby and you've been away for a little while. So drop him, drop him <laughs> in the cart, man. <laughs> welcome, welcome back. And yeah, as Trevor said, congratulations. Uh, how many sleepless nights is it now? <laughs> Good stuff. So uh, yeah, Steve, maybe you want to. Uh, are you really kicking off with me? Oh, okay, We're really, cool. really, really kicking off with you. Yeah, we, we, we love putting people <laughs> really, on the spot. Really. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, when I read it, it, it made me think of, um, I, I forget where the poem comes from, but it's, it's a line out of the latest Robin Hood movie with Russell Crowe. Rise, rise until, I think, lambs become lions or something like that. I forget it. Um, I like it. I think it's good. It's straight to the point. Um, and I think it... Uh, I think it builds quite nicely. I'm just trying to think. It's very you, Trevor. That's a, I'd have to say that to start with. I don't have much else. Let me have another look. I'll come back to you. <laughs> All right. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Uh, uh, nothing. Nothing like being dumped straight into it first. First thing back after, after what you've just been through. But uh, welcome back. Okay. So uh, let's let's go to Jasper next. So Jasper, uh, bring it together for us. Morning. I was hoping you start with Ed again. It's always a good choice because then he can do it for all of us. And all we need to say is Dito. Uh, but uh, I think just the, the general um, comment on the poem and uh, with the general message of uh, be different, uh, get away from the crowds, uh, focus, uh, and, uh, and then by by focus, it means there's an end goal, and ultimately that eagle, eagle is finding his next meal, uh, and it's about survival and 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 and, and continuation. 
And uh, so it was very much upper, uppermost in my mind. Uh, yesterday, I was contacted by almost the whole world, you know, in my sphere of influence, uh, from people who were just genuinely concerned to a couple of people who, uh, who I basically trust for their uh, source of information. And it's all about this pending hard lockdown that everybody talks about the government implementing over November, December. Uh, and my spontaneous reaction to them is, listen, first of all, there's absolutely no, but no, but no technical reason why it needs to be done. The only reason why they will probably not want to let go of, of the current uh, lockdown thing is because they have power. Um, and with uh, the, the country being in the mess it is and people now hungry and starting to burn things and destroy things, it gives them a quick and easy route to deploy the army and control the masses. But And, and they will use the, the, the COVID thing as, as the, the ruse. Anyway, so that was my response yesterday. So that's uppermost in my mind as we listen to some, something like this poem. Well, whatever's going to happen in November and December, I can't control it. Uh, I'm not the government. And uh, after November and December, there will become another thing. And uh, somewhere in the future, COVID will fade into, I mean, can you remember the time when you couldn't wake up anywhere and it wasn't about Zuma and his corruption? Now that has faded. Um, now, there will always be the next big thing that grabs attention. So it just confirms for me that we are totally being manipulated and controlled by the noise of the masses and whoever else are guilty in helping to control this uh, uh, mad uh, sound, uh, uh, things that distract us. So you have to get away from the crowd. Now, you are trying to get away from the crowd and I'm saying, all right, what is the future here? Um, and let's say a hard lockdown happens. What, what can I do about it? Well, okay, first of all, I can try and secure my family as best as I can, and I can make some provision with some basic uh, uh, living needs. But sooner or later, I have to create my own certainty. So some of that own certainty would become to say, okay, what do we do in terms of, uh, can, I, can I start a, a food garden? You know, as a practical example, or can I get some other access to some direct supplies of food if that becomes a real crisis but I don't want to spend my life just worrying about the next meal so I still want to carry on I still want to build businesses I still want to change the world in a better place so how will this new better place look like and I think you know uh, in a roundabout way we at uh, the, the chamber of commerce have, have basically said it to each other in so many words uh, over the last six seven eight months is uh, Although we don't know the, the future, we, we are pretty much now that go-to community uh, where, at least amongst ourselves, we'll figure out the next step. And I think what we're doing here is to say, all right, now focus. What is the dot? Each of us will have a different dot for ourselves, but uh, maybe we have a collective dot to focus on. Um, and, uh, you know, you can stay in the, the, the air forever and ever, or you can, or, or, let me say, you can't stay in the air forever and ever. The, ever the, the air getting up and rising is just your means to eventually get to your, uh, me, your meal or your target to strike it and then get back and uh, then maybe return to the nest. So I think we are, uh, we are a bunch of eagles. You can't control a bunch of eagles. They fly in their own time, in their own space. Um, they're pretty aggressive to each other. And yet somehow we will learn into this new future to rely on each other's foresight. Uh, and each of us are busy with our own territory, call it uh, your space, sphere of the industry that you are uh, uh, you know, working in. And um, hopefully collectively we'll make sure that uh, we, we don't disturb the ecosystem, but we are creating a new ecosystem and we can raise our new chicks. So uh, this is my rambles for today. Thanks, Jasper. Yeah, I was wondering where you were taking us uh, when you when you started off on this whole thing. It sounded like we were going down the conspiracy theory route again, but uh, I'm I'm glad you brought it uh, you brought it back after a while. There. But uh, yeah, just uh, having a giggle at uh, some of the comments in the chat box there. Uh, 
yeah i'm not too sure which uh which which hybrid we should go for here but uh, <laughs> i think uh, donovan we need uh, some sanity please so donovan uh, let's take it over to you thanks ivan morning everyone yeah just as i wrote in the chat box um my story is based on those four words which is timing uh, movement focus and what's the other one now let me just look again um timing move um movement focus and thinking yes i think maybe thinking is the most important that's where you need to start and then hopefully the rest will follow and everything will work out smoothly yeah i know it's a bit short but that's all i can think of at this time thank you Great, thanks, Solomon. Yeah, and uh, keep it keep it simple. Exactly what you've done there is 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 the key. Don't overcomplicate things. Right, Trevor Carty, over to you. Ditto, Jasper. So, you know, I I think uh, for me, two things over the last period. Um, I've been inspired to write a song. So, Trevor Nell. I hate you because now I've got to learn how to play guitar. But uh, so I've written a song. And uh, the second thing is, I think you should add a, a, another line. I don't know if it's a, a preface line or a post line. And it should say, rinse, reset, repeat. It's going to happen again and again and again. So we can come back and read this 10 years from now. And we'll be over the mask crisis. I don't see one of us wearing a mask. I think we're all Donald Trump supporters. But uh, just rinse, reset, repeat. Rinse, reset, repeat. Thanks, Trevor. And I, I love the, uh, the, the the drum beat of, of the hammers in the background emphasizing your words. <laughs> so, right, uh, Vinay, let's, uh, let's get over to you and then see if you can bring this unruly bunch to order. You muted, Vinay. Vinay, you muted. <laughs> I concentrated on the last three lines because that was my homework, and I always do my homework. Take okay? care. So, I think the think, think, think for yourself. I I saw it as pay attention to your skills, what what your application is, but also extend that learning. So you need to continuously educate yourself and get take your thinking deeper. You don't. I wrote an article about, you know, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater during COVID-19, actually taking your skills and developing them and honing them and changing them in a way that actually can adapt to the situation. And I believe that's what the poem was referring to. And then the focus section of the poem is um, something that actually the chamber taught me, and that is to stop trying to market 100 skills. Stop trying to sell a hundred things. Stop trying to be a jack of all trades and actually concentrate and focus on what is your core competency, what you can actually really excel at. And um, the last line is strike, strike, strike when it's right. And after you've done all this stepping back and thinking and concentrating on yourself, you, you then actually have to take action. You can't sit back and wait. You have to take the first step and you have to take action, whether it be in educating yourself, making money, helping the community, whatever it is, you need to take action in order to actually get a fulfilling result. And that's me. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Vinay. Yeah, I think uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, none of it helps unless you actually do something at the end of the day. So uh, you've really got to really got to apply it somewhere along the line. Line. So, Ed, I think it's up to you now. See if you can uh, bring it all together. Yeah, ditto what Vernay said. <laughs> um, you're, not gonna, you're, not gonna, you're not going to get off that easily, Ed. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> For Steve's benefit, we we. Um, discussed the first three lines separately on, on three different days. And then we talked about the next two lines together. And, and our homework, as Vernay quite rightly points out, 
was to discuss the next three lines. And I'll do that very briefly. And I think, you know, for me, the think, think, think for yourself, for yourself is the important thing. You know, why have we risen above the crowds if we're then going to follow the crowds? So it's about thinking for yourself. And I think we discussed briefly group think a, a, a few weeks ago. Um, and then focus, 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 because that's the whole point, isn't it? Is to, is to get this view and decide what to do. Uh, and then what are you focusing on? Well, focusing on a dot, not a big sort of tract of land, but a precise thing you're going to do, something you're really good at. As, and then strike, but also strike when it's right. Don't spend all your time analysing, faffing about, because you're going to starve to death up there. At some point in time, you've got to eat the rabbit. Um, so, and also don't do it too early because you kind of, you know, you've got to pick the right moment. And I think, you know, the last line is actually action, isn't it? And for me, I always think goals without actions are just dreams. So the action bit important. Um, there's also one part of the poem I don't like. Um, and before I deal with that, I just want to pick up on something that Jasper said yesterday, which was that with the wind, you can't see it. And I think Trevor also picked up the fact you needed skill to master it. And I think in business, there's lots of things that you can't see the consequences of. You can't see directly. It might be you can um, see what happens when you have a new manufacturing process. But how do you see something like um, the company ethos? Or, or you know, So I think it might be worth discussing at some point in time, stuff we can't see. I don't know how, but um, that, that really interested me. Um, so back to, back, back to what I don't like. I don't like the title. And it really bugs me. And the reason I don't like the title, is it says crisis chaos, connect great you know some lovely alliteration there on the dots and then when we read the poem it's dot singular and that kind of bugged me and it really bugged me and i kind of found that when things really bug me it's normally my problem the problem lies with me and it was when Ivan said um, yesterday about change, and I forget exactly what he said. He said, when you're looking to sort of change something, change the way you think about it. So that's what I did. I said, well, what happens if Trevor's title is really, really good? Let's look at it that way. And then I realized that it is really, really good. Because what he's talking about is really we're doing our dot, but other people are doing their dots. And if we can collaborate with those dots and connect those dots, we make what we're doing even more powerful. So thank you, Ivan, for, for, for debugging me. <laughs> and I think, you know, that, that, that whole poem stacks up because it's really driving us to that point taking action, taking focused action, what Verne said, concentrate on one thing or a couple of things, things you're really good at, ignore all the noise, just get in there, focus, do it. And I think actually, you know, there's another side to connecting the dots, which I didn't think about today um, until Trevor Carty said it, I think, which was, we're, this, this is an iterative process. We won't just do it once. There won't just be one dot job finished. We'll be going through it again, so that it, it'll be on spin cycle. That's my thoughts. Great, thanks, Ed. Yeah, um, I think it's exactly that. You know, it's it's, you know, and and that's what you know that's what the whole thing does for me. You know, it, it tells us to look at things from a different perspective, to to get a different focus, to to try and get uh, some, you know, just a completely different view of what's going on, and uh, you know, ultimately. I think you you hit the nail on the head for me with the dots. You know, you can't just be one dot. It's got to be a process. It's got to be a series, and it's got to it's got to connect. Um, you know, how how do they how do they all stack up uh, at the end of the day to 
to produce the results that you've envisioned while you soaring above the crowds there and you're getting this uh, this different vision and you know it brings it right back down to to i suppose my core skill at the end of the day and that's uh, that's uh, putting the dots together you know actually making the program uh, designing the process um, you know putting things together in a, in a manner that will actually lead you back up to that big vision that you had when you were when you were soaring above the crowd uh, the crowds in the sky there so yeah, I, I think you I think you wrapped that one up uh, very nicely for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Steve and ask him uh, whether he's uh, gained a little bit further uh, insight into into what we've been chatting about and whether it's uh, given many more food for thought. It's been good to have a couple of minutes to think. Thanks, Ivan. Um, I'll share two or three things quickly. The first is. Um, I don't know if you've done any literary criticism on Ter Trevor's poem yet, um, but the first thing that strikes me is, no, is that a no you haven't or don't? <laughs> um, one of the first things that struck me about the poem is that there's, there's this wonderful literary device going on of the comparison between the two animals, at least that's how I see it in the poem. And you could actually split these two stanzas differently the rise above the noise, high beyond the crowds, think for yourself and strike when it right. For me, that's a human element. And that speaks to me as a person. The other is a very vivid picture of the eagle, you know, that soars like an eagle upon the winds. And it looks from far away and it focuses on the dot. And I like how those are juxtaposed together in each of the stanzas. And also that they switch for me as you go from the first to the second stanza. And it keeps your attention on the idea of paying attention to this picture of the eagle and how it operates. Um, and so I like that. I think that's really effective because it gives me a mental picture to go, okay, so this is what I interpret Trevor to be saying is this picture of an eagle and how that transposes to human life and what the lessons are that we can learn from that. Um, so I like that. I don't know if that's intentional or not, Trevor. Not. Okay. Well, well done. Fantastic. <laughs> um, but, and then the, uh, the title reminds me of a cycle, which I use quite a lot in my own life and when I'm coaching with people or doing counseling or whatever, which I might've shared, shared with you guys before, which is the order chaos reorder cycle. And it's essentially that on the other side of every element of chaos or crisis, there's a potential to reorder, but a lot of people run away from that rather than into the potential that comes after chaos and crisis. Um, and so that for me is quite a, I like the picture as that connects with this idea of the, of the eagle, you know, jumping off the cliff and heading out hunting is potentially a movement into chaos because you have no idea what's going to come out of that. And it's got to operate from its skill set to be able to bring home the food. And the last one for me is the dynamic between, yeah, the eagle has to get above the noise and beyond the crowds as we do, but there's a dynamic interplay between the eagle and the rabbits and the eagle needs the rabbits. And so, as I think it was Ed said, um, it's got to go down there and grab the rabbit at some point, but the rabbit also needs the eagle because if rabbits overpopulate their space, then they destroy the vegetation and they die out. And so I think that that for me speaks of our interconnectedness. And that's part of the way in which our own personal cycles coming through the chaos into a reorder also evidences in society that we can also reorder together better as opposed to just separating ourselves there's separation is really important in terms of i think of that line think for yourself that's really important group think is a is a damaging practice um but the group doesn't disappear at some point we we're reliant on each other in this society and so there's a connection back into i think what we can do for ourselves and for each other that i see coming out of the poem so anyway thanks for including me at the death there thanks trevor it's a cool poem man trevor carty we're looking forward to your uh, chart topper next let us know when it hits the radio waves. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank, thanks, Steve. And uh, yeah, so, so, so pleased that uh, we gave you some time to think and that your mind isn't stuck in changing nappies. We've uh, got, got, right, we got the right end out there, I think, uh, <laughs> talking about the different ends there. So we've got, we got the thinking brain out there. And uh, I see uh, Trevor's parked on the runway, so uh, not too sure where he's uh, not flying to, but uh, maybe uh, I'll hand back to him to, to tell us what this is all about. Uh, look, uh, just the inputs have been absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. So thank you to everyone. Uh, just um, for me, and, and I'll talk to Steve on this because it's his first time here. Um, this just came out. Uh, it was something that were random thoughts, 2.30 in the evening. I 
put it down on a piece of paper. I think I've still got the piece of paper around somewhere. Let me see. No, it's not here. But anyway, uh, I showed everyone. <clears throat> I just did one or two lines just to get some order. Uh, I'm certainly no liter literary genius, as you can hear. Um, and uh, it, it came out, and, and then I started sharing it. And, and what really intrigues me is simple lines and how people interpret these things and the depth of the interpretation. And for me, it's just a reminder of simplify, simplify, simplify all the time, especially in this time of chaos and, and crisis. Now, uh, I want to touch on this thing. Uh, I loved it going to the title and turning around and saying I hated it. And then he ended up arguing against himself and said he loved it at the end of it. So I'm not the only irrational, illogical, contradictory individual in this forum. That's why I like it. Uh, but this picture uh, was placed onto Mark Jarrett's virtual international pub, um, his network on WhatsApp. And it was about three uh, posts ago, uh, early this morning, an individual took a shot of all of these 747s parked at Gloucestershire uh, Airport, parked. Um, this is a dot. Uh, and when Jasper turned around and said he had all these people phoning to say, oh, there's doom and gloom and all that sort of thing coming out, where is it all going to go? I think we've got to watch a dot like this. Uh, it's not just an effect in, in our country. I think this is a worldwide phenomenon uh, that is pushing people to, to depth of the uncomfortable that they actually don't want to acknowledge. And I think the world of business is changing substantially right in front of us, and we're not looking at it. <clears throat> How long? And I listened to the executive of Airbus, uh, and yeah, these are 747 sitting around. How long can global businesses as we knew it actually withstand what's going on here? Um, I listened to Richard Branson yesterday. He turned around and he doesn't expect this industry to come back for another 18 months. So what does that mean to tourism in countries? Now, in the little chat, so the dot, uh, and Ed, uh, whether it's dot or dots, I, th I think we have to turn around and say, listen, we as individuals have got to, we don't want to survive. This isn't a network for survival here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a network for thriving. So how do we take these dots that we can see and begin to create this, and I use the word hybrid, which is just in old days was diversification, and, and Vernet just picked it up absolutely spot on about taking what is your core skill and then diversifying uh, to actually appeal to the dots that we're starting to see emerge. And, and so that's why I'm excited about Vernet. Uh, this uh, group company secretary on a global scale, if we're all wanting to thrive in this world, uh, we want to put out product out there that uh, is different to what people have been doing and we want to appeal very quickly to getting the money in. So I like building businesses and making money. Um, then we need someone who's got this group company, what I haven't got, to pull all the pieces together for us of quality individuals around the world that are recognizing, hey, they're problems. Now, what do I do? Because I might be a pilot here. How does this pilot feed their family uh, and everyone the knock-on effect to uh, to all those pilots. I remember old days pictures of all these flight paths going around. I'd love to see what the flight paths are around the world right now. There must be something that we can actually see. This is a dot uh, and it's telling me that 
We've got to work and focus on what is our hybrid offer out to the marketplace? What is our diversification? Um, and in the hope that maybe some of what we used to do comes back, but what are we doing right now to actually change our focus on the way that we generate income and revenue in this new dispensation that seems to be unfolding in front of us? That's my little rant for the day. Did you hear me? Uh, we can. Yeah, would you like to take your share screen down? Thanks. Thanks, Trevor. I'm yep. trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Good. All right. So, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Um, you talk about global flight paths. Yeah, yeah there are various uh, things that you can actually uh, see online. Uh, there's, a, there's a quick example of uh, uh, one of them. Um, so, yes. Is it on right now? This is apparently live. Yeah. Um, uh, quite quite interesting, yeah. Um, so there's obviously still stuff happening out there, um, and there are lots of things on the go. So, uh, and right. these are the dots that we've got to check out, and and we've got to feed each other positively on them, yeah. Uh, absolutely, okay. and I, I think you know I think that's that's one of the keys. You know, they they there is a lot of hype and negativity going around, as Jasper said at the start of the session. But, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of other stuff that's actually not being actually spoken about and, and presented to us. And, uh, and uh, you know, um, because the media loves negativity, the media doesn't love positive stories. And uh, so we need to find those positive stories and, and, and work on them. Uh, speaking of which, I've just uh, prompted Vinay and, and she she said yes so she mentioned she wrote an article it's a dangerous thing to do on this forum because as soon as you mention things like that they get picked up and uh, and uh, so I think tomorrow morning we're going to uh, see uh, and especially for Steve I don't know if you can join us tomorrow Steve but we're talking about babies and bathwater I think that was uh, Vinay said her, her article was about so uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna chat on that one so aside from that Go forth, find some positive news, find a few dots, see if you can strike, and uh, we'll talk about babies in bathwater tomorrow morning. So have a good one. We'll see you then. Go well.